Across the land, old, often ancient yews can be found gracing our churchyards and cemeteries, like this grand specimen at Much Markle in Herefordshire. But are these trees purely ornamental, or could their presence at these Christian sites be more sinister? There has long been an association between yew trees and life everlasting, probably because the trees themselves reach such a great age, and because the evergreen branches give rise to thoughts of eternal health and life. Framing the eastern doorway to the church, this tree has provided the incumbent clergy with a shady backdrop to both festival and funeral. From time to time, we had to trim, as I called, the whiskers on the trees because they got in the way of, of coffins passing down the path. The yew tree has long been associated with burial. In times past, caskets would often be adorned with yew wreaths. Mourners would carry yew branches to be placed in the graves, and the dead would be wrapped in yew-filled shrouds. In 1664, a botanist of the day, Robert Turner, graphically suggested that the churchyard yew's main function was to attract and imbibe putrefaction and gross vapours exhaled from the graves by the setting sun. But burial too close to the tree is not to be recommended. There can be no burials around the tree because of the roots which penetrate very far underground and it would be really difficult, even with modern mechanical shovels, to dig through that area now. With the passage of time, the tree has naturally hollowed, with parishioners putting the inside of the tree trunk to very good use. There is a record book, the church warden's record book of the 18th century, and it is recorded that a seat was placed in the tree for the princely sum of sixpence. Yew trees are often a place of shelter. Hollow ones like this, you can actually stand or sit inside. This, this one's gone, uh, uh, some local people here have made a, a bench out of oak, and they've got legs here made out of yew wood, which is very long lasting. It will have been a place where people will have met, um, perhaps secretly at night for a twist of some sort. I well remember three well-respected old ladies who used to come to church at 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings. They would walk through the park in their Wellingtons. They would sit in the tree, take off their Wellingtons, put respectable shoes on for church, and then at the end of the service, they would reverse the procedure before walking home through the park. In recent years, and by recent I mean the past 200 or so years, it's been used as a parish notice board. Here you can see the nail marks of the tree of, of 18th and 19th century nails where notices would have been put. Also, the tree was used from time to time, especially in the summer with really bright light, for wedding photographs, but usually it was too dark. Here in Herefordshire, a use associations with matrimony goes back many centuries. Local myth has it that if a girl placed a sprig of yew under her pillow, picked from a churchyard that she had never previously visited, that night, she would dream of her future husband. The yew at Much Markle certainly predates the 700-year-old church in whose ground it grows, and would have been standing when a neighboring manor house said by the Doomsday Book to be in the ownership of William the Conqueror was lived in. But as with many of these ancient hollow trees, its exact age is a matter of conjecture. When Lord Runcie was Archbishop of Canterbury, he and others signed a certificate and sent it to me, saying that the tree was estimated to be 1,500 years old. Usually when you're dating the age of a tree, you look at the annual rings of the tree to find out its age, or you might do some carbon dating from material from about here. But of course that's all gone. You can see from the width of the tree here how, how much wood has decayed and fallen away. So it's impossible for us to know with great, any great accuracy. But the most recent research suggests that trees of about this size are probably between two and three thousand years old. Quite a difference in length of time.
The yew tree was clearly perceived as a potent force in pre-Christian Britain, but whether the churches were built to exorcise earlier pagan worship is a difficult question to address. I know nothing historically here of people doing ritual dances or uh, wearing sprigs or anything like that. There is a, um, a lot of uh, evidence that trees were worshipped in the past, and the fact that churches were often built near to yew trees may suggest that uh, Christianity, as it were, took o over previous religious sites, sites which where the tree was worshipped. Folklore and mythology surrounded the churchyard yew, and some of the stranger myths are well documented. Never take any part of a churchyard yew indoors. Plant a yew as a windbreak against invisible winds and the powers of evil. Douse with a yew branch to find your lost property and condemn your enemies whilst holding a yew branch in your left hand and they shall never hear you. Shakespeare draws constant references to the yew. In Richard II, he refers to its poisoned branches being double fatal. Hamlet's uncle uses the juice of a yew tree to poison the king. And the witches of Macbeth add yew sprigs to their cauldron to ensure a potent brew. In much Markle, the sagging and poisonous branches of the tree are kept off the ground with the help of staves and posts. It was necessary to put them up and to put the cross beams because I believe you have to be very careful about trimming the branches of a yew tree. They do, of course, stretch out far further than they did, but nobody wanted to ruin the tree or to curtail its growth. On two of its sides, the tree is supported by lamp posts that once lit the streets of Cheltenham. Nowadays, these luminaires act as crutches for the tree's heavy canopy. Whilst within, the heart grows stronger and wider, its deep-seated roots defying anyone to question its immortality. Round England with a...